the first crude, blurry pictures of Mars uh, that early astronomers did in the beginning of the 20th century were not very accurate, not very revealing, led a rise to all sorts of speculation that turned out not to be true about canals and dying civilizations on Mars. It did lead to a lot of wonderful stories. Perhaps the most famous was Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles, which were written in the 1950s. The real Mars, of course, uh, which we saw on the surface for the first time with the Viking landers, which landed in 1976, revealed it to be a world that, of course, didn't have canals or Martians, but was very intriguing, a rocky world, desert-like, strewn with stones. As we began to develop the ability to reach Mars more reliably with orbiters or even landers, we began to leave our presence on the planet tracks, if not footprints, of our exploration vehicles. The satellites that we're sending into orbit Mars now have cameras that are of staggering detail, uh, bringing back pictures of unbelievable quality and depth that reveal Mars to us in ways that we couldn't possibly imagine. A Mars filled with sand dunes, with erosion, uh, with weather. It's a Mars with geological activity uh, where you can actually capture avalanches from orbit, like this picture, or look at things over time, these intriguing patterns that look like outflows of possible liquid under the surface. Most recently, we've landed a probe up at the polar region of Mars uh, called Phoenix, which is looking at the ice and has seen signs of water ice that are revealed in detailed pictures like this. Mars is a planet that's revealing itself as a place of surprising complexity of weather, of geology, of landscape, possibly a place where water ice uh, is found and perhaps even liquid water may still flourish under the Martian sands. Who knows?